find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Welcome to the Awesome Cast, the show where we get geeky and talk tech, social media, and more with the local nerds that use it here live from Pittsburgh, PA. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, SorgatronMedia.com in Mayhem Studios, uh, ready to get going here. Joining me tonight, it's really appropriate, I, it, it, it's so much, it's so Microsoft-y on this show, we butt out all the other guys, uh, we got... Crazy Kraus, Ron Kraus, joining us this week. Uh, good to have you back on, sir. Thanks for uh, jumping in at the last minute here. No problem. I appreciate it. So, uh, like I said, we're gonna, it, it's going to be a bit of Microsoft. I, it, it was so much I was looking at the news. I was wondering what else happened that didn't have M money all over it, right? Um, but anyways, this is AwesomeCast. You can find us over at AwesomeCast.net. Sometimes we talk about some uh, uh, products on the show, like batteries and keyboards for your iPad, stuff like that. We like to link those uh, with affiliate links. If you want to support the show, if you're buying that stuff anyways, you like what we're talking about, go over there. Check that out. And also, I just add a, a thing. I, I talk about Backblaze all the time when we're backing stuff up now. Now. There's now an affiliate link on there. If uh, you go click on that, you'll help out uh, the show through that as well. Click on all the things. Just just do me a favor. Click on all the things that look cool. And we got a Patreon over there, too. If you want to support the show uh, directly, you can do that, too. And if we get enough Patreon users, we'll just ditch all the affiliate links and everything, and, and we'll just have a show. And that, that'll be great. And you'll be our boss. That'll be tremendous. And even as low as a penny, and you'll be in there. And uh, we're going to have some extra stuff uh, when people start signing up for it. So... Um, anyways, uh, you can also look us up, AwesomeCast, on Twitter. Uh, look up AwesomeCast on Facebook, on Google+. Hit us up on AwesomeCast at SorgatronMedia.com for your email. And please subscribe and rate us over on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio. Any comment interaction uh, helps bump that show up and, and, and gets more people to, to kind of discover us. Uh, and, and that's one way if you don't want to help us out monetarily, that's okay. Just help get the word out there. And, of course, you can join us here live every Tuesday at live.awesome.com. Awesomecast.net or live.sorgatronmedia.com about 6.30 p.m. Eastern time or so. Uh, we, we're usually getting set up and uh, getting started. So with that, let's get into our awesome things of the week. We have so many, and they're, they're all Microsoft. I know that. So um, let's get off with what I think is the most impressive of them uh, right out the gate is, uh, is, is, is HoloLens. Are you with me, Kraus? Yep, I'm okay. here. <laughs> Just double check yes, that audio. Right I'm very impressed by this. This is, I think, this is a game changer. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure, for sure. So, so for those that haven't seen it, it's this device goes over your eyes. It's like, um, it looks like Google Glass on steroids, perhaps. But it's a full, it's a full lens that goes uh, over your entire face. Uh, you still yeah. look through it. It's like a visor kind of situation, and I guess it superimposes the images on the lens. And and you interact it in real space. Um, I'll see if I can pull up some video here while we're talking. Uh, yeah. But this is like it, it's not virtual reality. It's uh, I finally today actually got to see the demo that they did live, and it's very weird because you're kind of it's still representational because she's wearing the thing and interacting with things, but they have another camera and it's showing us what she's seeing in the 3D space. Right, like stuff like you know this guy on a on the top of a pedestal or or apps or, or, or something like that. Um, and now, of course, the 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 concept video that they released on this, it's not going to look that good. You know, even even as it is, like you see, uh, you see in the demo from her vision, like her hand underneath the image she's trying to interact with, right? Right. Like it, yeah. It, and from what from what I've what I've heard so far, though. The few um, uh, writers that I've t uh, I've listened to or uh, read articles, everyone's very impressed by what they've seen so far. Oh, yeah. Like you said, granted, these are very specific situations where they're you're showing off a product demo, so you know they're going to try to give you the best possible scenario. But um, from everything I've seen, they, they I think they're calling well, they're calling it holograms. I don't know if I would agree. <laughs> it's not a hologram. That it's a hologram, 
it's more of a, a augmented reality. I right. think is a better way of of saying it. So you know, your blank wall. Maybe you'll see a menu or a video display or something like that. I, I think it scans the environment around you. They, I'm sure you've seen the Minecraft video mm -hmm. where one of the buildings from Minecraft was sitting on the coffee table and then below the coffee table off the side on the floor was another building and things like that. You could crack open a piece of the wall and you could see more Minecraft outside, so to speak. Right, so, right. Like and, I said, the whole augmented reality thing. And even on top of that, the big thing they say that doesn't convey in these videos is when you do have that, and there's uh, one where there's like a fireplace, minecraft -y fireplace in the wall, and he says you don't actually look through the wall, and there's depth to it. Um, and the closest thing from what you're describing it, it seems like, so we were talking about a while ago, um, uh, the PlayStation, they had a book that you could get uh, with all their PlayStation Move stuff, and uh, the book, you'd hold it up, and there's like a Harry Potter spell book application they had for a while. And uh, you open up the book, and there's like a hole in the book when you are when you hold it up to the screen, or, or I don't know if you had glasses or something, I can't recall. Um, but yeah, that whole like idea of the depth, and, 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 and just like, that's incredible. I, I, I'm, 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 really, I'm really hot on this. I, I, I think um, this is going to be a game changer. This is for real, and it sounds like it works pretty much as advertised, even as a 1.0 thing. That's going to be incredible. But the only question is... Are we going to get developers on it? You know, um, what, what's, what is it going to take? Uh, this has been often yep. compared in, in the week since as, um, well, this is going to have the same problem as as Connect. Connect's a great idea, and a lot of people were doing a lot of cool things. When, uh, when I was uh, doing some ad adjunct teaching at uh, PTI, Pittsburgh Technical Institute, a uh, friend of the show, Josh Sager, uh, he was heading up some groups that were programming some stuff. Like They set up Connects with projectors, and they had some touchscreen kind of things set up and everything. Um, so as, as kind of in the hallway demos to kind of show off what they were doing there at the right. school. Like it, there was this kind of hacker community around it. But if you looked at the library of like connect games and software and a lot of it kind of felt like demos from the looks of things. Um, you know, I don't own one, so I haven't really di dove into a lot of that kind of stuff. When I borrowed one, I didn't have the right power adapter for my old Xbox, I guess. Um, but, uh, but this is, this is a game changer if it works out. And then they did the right thing. Now we know why they paid all that money for Minecraft, completely. Because that's the, oh yeah, completely. It, it, I completely agree. With you. you didn't have a Minecraft, a killer app like that to start with, with um, Connect. There wasn't, you know, there's not yeah. like a Mario game for Connect or something like that, like that would sell like a Wii, right? Um, I it's, agree. It's it's you. I mean, this is the thing that's like propping up the Let's Play videos on YouTube. You know, this is the thing that people go and just watch, you know, um, yep. that that just blows me away that 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 uh, what a good move. What a smart move. I, and I love that they were yeah. they, uh, again, watching the kind of quick hit presentation of Verge puts up puts up because uh, they always do a nice compression of, of announcements like this. Um, they said that they like, uh, ironically, this was actually developed right underneath us in this building. It's like like it was right there. Only about a thousand people knew about it. Uh, yeah, they kept. They kept the lid on everything. Uh, that's that's tremendous. You know, uh, Microsoft isn't known for that level of secrecy, right? Uh, micro, micro yeah. Well, from what I understand too, is what they did is gave they broke up the project into different code names and gave them all these different names. So if something one little piece of it would get leaked, mm -hmm. that would give them an indication of which team did the leaking, so to speak. Yeah. In fact, one of the people on uh, Major Nelson's podcast, Laura uh, Massey, I believe her last name is, she was part of the project, and most of the people on his podcast, they did it every week, had no idea she was even working on this project. Right, right. And she'd been working on it for two or three years. And, that's, and it's showing you kind of the different... And, and, and that's a few years. That, that that's, that's beyond when, you know, our, our current... Uh, Microsoft uh, president, you know, so this is still a, a, a bomber uh, era kind of thing. Uh, but yep. to see it like pulled out like this and very like, hey, and we got this thing that you didn't even see left field. Like this turned into an Apple keynote at a certain point. You know, yeah, as, I agree. as far as the, you got what now? What holocaust? Like, I, I, 
you know, it wasn't, you know, I was like, ah, I know there's a Microsoft thing today, and I looked, and I was like, oh, oh I guess it passed. I gotta wait for one of these shows to render so I can uh, I can listen to to what happened. And then they're like, yeah, so holograms. What do you talk about holograms? I pull up some pictures yeah. and videos. I'm like, what the heck is this stuff? And by the way, it runs Windows 10. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Oh, and by the way, everything runs Windows 10. <laughs> We're t- you know, you're talking the Hologlass. You're talking the Windows Phone. You're talking the Xbox One. Your, your Windows Workstations, Windows Tablets, everything, one platform. Right. Will it actually happen this time? Because I know yeah, this we've, we've had this promise something in the past. they've been promising for they a very showed, long time. They showed a lot of crossover. So, so give me so so I didn't get the deep dive into a lot of this stuff. Um, I, I saw a little bit of what the Xbox was doing. They're going to kind of unify the Xbox stuff. They're going to have streaming to it. We, I mean, we already have PlayStation is streaming to all the other PlayStation devices. But now it's just like, and this is the thing that's blo- I've been thinking about this in the last last week since this was announced. Why has Microsoft not? capitalize on the fact that they have a PC in how many homes with their yep. Xbox like I know they were separated and I think that really led to the success but it felt like there should have been something and 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 I had a couple games that ran on games for Windows Live and it was so kludgy and it was, just wasn't anywhere near the experience even old Xbox was doing at the time it just blows my absolute mind at that point point. Yeah. And, and now we're kind of, it looks like it's kind of happening we're at least getting streaming I would love a point where, well, it's a, it's running on Microsoft software. Can I throw it in a Windows 10 machine and play my copy of Assassin's Creed? Like, I think that would be the perfect thing. And uh, even some some are suggesting maybe this will solve the backwards compatibility problem with Windows or uh, Xbox 360. So I, I you never I, know. So so how how deep in what are they saying about how is Windows 10 becoming a part of Xbox One? Like, obviously, it does run on a Windows kernel right now. Yeah, well, it's it, it already is running on a Windows kernel. What which kernel that is, I'm not real a hundred percent sure. I don't know if they've ever actually come out and said whether it was a Windows eight kernel or not. Right. But uh, it is moving to a Windows ten kernel. When this is all said and done, literally everything Microsoft will be running on some form. Now, granted, it might not be identical, but it will be some form of Windows ten, or at least that's what they're promising. You know, it's it's back to that, you know, write it once, share it on many kind of idea. And that idea actually has me very excited. As everyone knows in the chat room, I am a Windows phone kind of guy. And so <laughs> he's the holding idea it, he's, he's holding it up for your video or your audio wow. listeners. Sorry. I'm sorry. I was just letting the audio listeners know he's holding up his phone. Yes. So um <laughs> Maybe I'll finally start getting some apps like we just talked about before we started this podcast. You you kid me because oh there's an app I'm showing for Android and iOS, but it's not on Windows Phone. You know, having the ability to write your applications and get those developers and to me this is what's gonna help drive that um I don't know the word I'm looking for, but Having the, having to be able to write for the Xbox and to write for the desktop and to write for the tablet and to write for the phone and who knows maybe even writing for the Hololens, I think is going to really help drive more of that app prolification throughout all of Windows because now you're writing once for many different types of things and that's very exciting to me. Will it actually happen? Only time will tell. But I, I'm, I'm very excited by the future that it's potential. The potential future, I guess, is the best way to say that. Certainly, certainly. Um, and, and they already have uh, – uh, I love this openness. I'm, I'm running Windows 10, actually. I haven't gone into it too, too much. I keep forgetting it's on there. Uh, but I have it dual booted on my, ac- uh, on my MacBook Pro. Uh, for instance, um, and it, it's slick. It has been slick. I haven't tried the, this new preview that just came out this past week. It doesn't have all the features they even talked about last week at the at the session. But it, it's it's a it's a technical preview. It's a beta. Don't replace your machine with this thing. Um, it, it, that 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 could be a problem. Um, but I did. Oh, of course, you did. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to you on it right now. Nice. Well, we know that. We know that Google Hangout works on it. So there's that. Um, I tried throwing some Steam games at it and see what would happen. So, oh, well, I, I haven't completed that kind of test though. Um, 
but uh, but they're really uh, it feels like they're fixing things. Um, it's going to be a free upgrade for the first year. So there's a yep. There's a which is a brilliant bastard. move. Mm-hmm. Let's let's end the splinter. You know, try to bring everybody back into the fold. I think it's a great idea. Okay, you know, and they're not demanding you bring it to start it up like I did with the preview or anything like that. They're saying you want to wait six months, eight months. That's fine. You got you got one year to, to upgrade, and it's free. After that, uh, you know, they haven't really said how much it will cost or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But I think it's a great idea to try to bring everybody back, get everybody back on the same operating system, running the same security patches, and the whole nine yards. And to be honest, I mean, they don't really lose too much by doing that. I think they have everything to gain by get, keep, keeping people in the ecosystem. Um, because they're still going to make their money by selling the licenses to the PC makers and, and businesses. Because I, I'm yep. almost certain this is a, a strictly consumer kind of thing. If you're if you're an enterprise, and even if you're an enterprise, you're still at, you still have a service contract. Even if they're giving this for free, you're still paying for a service yep. contract with Windows for the licenses, um, which is a whole different game. Um, and, and that's that's their money. You know that in the PC sales. I mean that's that's it. Um, uh, Alex Carr says he's running Windows 10 on his toaster right now. It might be if the way they're putting this in everything, and the fact I think it's a testament that it's they, they, they have it there, they have it on the phone, uh, and they're saying this is going to be the same Windows on the phone as well, right? Is is that the vibe I was getting? Yes. Okay. That is the vibe you're getting. It's going to be Windows 10 on the eight inch or smaller tablet. It's going to be a phone slash tablet version of Windows 10. Right. Right. Um, great, you know, I think that's perfect. Then, then there's like, I think that makes that easier, you know, as people become familiar. I with agree. That. Uh, like it's not as confusing, it, it, you know. You don't have, well, it's Windows 10 here, but it's or eight here, but it's seven on my computer, you know. And they need to keep that. It needs to be when we go to Windows 11 or whatever the next thing is. It needs yeah. to stay that way. You know, that's the problem. Is we've seen great, great initiatives by by Microsoft, but then they don't stick around. You know. Right. Um, and uh, they, they need to kind of stay the course, I guess. Um, you know, it, and I give Sachi and Della a whole lot of credit. I don't know how much or if any of the actual keynote you listen to, but one of the things that I know for me as a loyal Windows user, for a while there we felt like second-class citizens. It was right. not to hear him say, you know, yes, we're bringing everything to every platform we possibly can. But the best version of those things are going to be on Windows. Right. And, and you know, I like I said, I we've had this. You, you mentioned Google and Google Chat. What we're doing right now, you know, for many many years now, Google has you know scorned Windows Phone, you know, with no apps, no access, no anything. Yet Microsoft puts everything they have on their platforms mm-hmm. so it's nice to and i know there's been a lot of there was a lot of blowback when you know the touch first um office rolled out to app <laughs> android and it rolled out the, to to uh i the ipads and the iphone and things like that and people were like well where's it at for windows phone so it, it was really nice to hear him actually come out and said you know yes we're going to support every platform there is but the best experience you're ever going to get is on our products, so that was. It makes nice. sense. It makes sense, but 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 I think I think maybe it was a period of uh, we're going to uh, reach out on these and try to bring back people in. Because how many times we've we seen an app pop up and you're like, this is a Microsoft thing, you know? So so for the people that have already betrayed the 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 brand and gone to their other devices you know your androids your iphones um it it, it feels like it is something that's brought people in and maybe people think maybe i should get this one drive thing um and that's it's that little bit of creep factor just like you know hey we put itunes over on your windows machine so many years ago and now you have an iDevice, and look what that probably escalated to i mean it's an entry device right it's it's, yeah you're right i mean how many people who were like oh let's try this iphone that seems pretty cool because nobody else is doing anything let's be honest windows wasn't uh with phones we had windows phones in this house they sucked um but uh (laughs) yes they did back in the day they did but you know again and another thing where i think people forget is you know okay yes they put I know the everybody was freaking out because Office Touch first Office went to the iPad, but 
let's be honest, as much as it breaks my own heart, where are the majority of your users? Mm -hmm. You know, if you're if you're spending a lot of time writing a new piece of software, do you want to write it? It's it's you know, you want to write it for the small amount of users, or you want to write it for the largest amount? Of users? Right. And, and and if it's if it's as easy, and I'm no developer, I don't know how easy this will be when they get this rolled out. But we, I mean, we saw the initials like how easy to put a put a put a put an app on there. And you said you were you were playing with right. that too. Um, you know, if it's a well, uh, well uh, Visual Studio. Uh, a lot of stuff is, is written for for it's like Microsoft's kind of de facto uh, development software, I believe. Um, and, yes. and, and if there's just a uh, checkbox that turns it in, you know, scalable down to a Windows phone or an Xbox app, and and whatever developer license you have, and you just send it along to the uh, Microsoft Store, great. You know, um, that that makes that easier. It, it adds that consideration on. Now you're not going to get a lot of mobile up. Is the only problem I think. Like you're not gonna get a um, Instagram first kind of situation because no. you're not gonna put Instagram on the rest of the stuff because that's not their strategy, right? Um, but it ha right. it's gonna be a a desktop down kind of approach because um, I think while and even like I don't think of of Windows tablets like it, this is another interesting thing when I think about getting a tablet, do you don't think about getting a Windows tablet? I feel even yet you you. If you're getting a Windows tablet, you're getting a Windows computer that happens to be a tablet. Does that make sense? Uh, you, you see where I'm kind of getting at there? You're right. Yeah, yes, I do. And I think actually Windows 10 is going to skew that even a little more. <laughs> so we're going to be even that, more confused. No, I don't know if it will be more confused. I think it just might be better. <laughs> like the idea of an 8-inch tablet that behind that tablet... Is an actual full That's working right. computer. Right. It, it, it's a stagger, and I know I'm a geek and everything, but it, <laughs> it blows my mind because I think, oh my God, to be able to walk around with an eight inch tablet in my hand and then go home, place it in some kind of dock, it's the dream, or man. plug it in, and suddenly I have a 22 inch monitor, mouse, and keyboard, and full Windows from that same device. Oh my goodness! How glorious and, 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 that and it's be. not like it's not like we haven't had a, a laptop dockable solutions in the past, but they're ugly. And and to have like that yes. idea that it, you you have a Surface, and there wasn't there there was a docking station they were talking about with the last Surface release, wasn't there? Uh, well, that, they dock the late Surface, and it, it it's, that's a big monitor. You know, yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah. a that's almost the size of my laptop screen. Yeah. The Surface. Not that there's any problem with that. But I just think that little 8-inch screen, having a little 8-inch screen to walk around with, to throw in your bag, and to carry around with you, and then suddenly being take that little 8-inch machine and turn it into a full workstation is just, just a great idea to me, to me personally. This is the future. Uh, well, let's take that moment. Yeah. Uh, uh, we talked so much it made me hungry here, and uh, and, and and we went we get hungry here uh, up here in the South Hills of Pittsburgh and Beachview. Uh, we head down the slice on Broadway. Uh, they hook us up here every week at Podcast Day. Uh, when people are at, on a run like Malenga was tonight for Rambling Movie Minute, uh, we got one waiting for them. And so glad that uh, you know they 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 support good podcasting here in Pittsburgh, and we like to support good pizza in Pittsburgh. Award winning sliceonbroadway.com. They uh, they make the stuff from the finest stuff they can get their hands on, always from scratch. It's not a frozen crust that they get in Pizza Hut by the truck. There was a I don't know what I was listening to. There was another podcast and they were talking about. Oh, I think it was Back to Work, perhaps, or Roderick on the line, one of those. And they talked about you can't get an extra large tonight, sir. We're out of extra larges. It's bread. It's it's dough. They make the sizes right there. I, I think I've seen looked back there and seen them doing the hand twirly thing that, you, that like the pizza makers in New York do. Um, these guys are awesome. Uh, they are down here in Beachview on the tracks, right on Broadway, and also Main Street down in Kennegy, PA. That's how I say it, Mad Mike. Um, and like I said, check them out. Slice, sliceonbroadway.com and uh, slice underscore pgh on Twitter. And also, also look them up. They're on Facebook and uh, Instagram as well. And you're going to get hungry too. So uh, thanks to them for support of the show. Chachi's saying he he installed Bleem on his blender. How many people out there know what the heck Bleem is? Do you know what that is? No, I have this no idea. This is a video game thing. Is. This was an emulator. 
This is an unofficial emulator you could buy. I, ha I have a copy of this somewhere. It does, it's not going to work anymore because it doesn't have all the, of the updates. Um, but I think it played it played PlayStation One games on my computer using my 3DFX card. Nice. Yeah, there's a Dreamcast version too. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, um, age is that. Uh, what else? Uh, Microsoft had a couple other things going on. Uh, let's see. We talked about this. How was Cortana, which is kind of just kind of more Cortana. Was there anything significant out of that? I mean, well, it, Cortana on your computer. Cortana on your Xbox. Yeah. She is coming to your Xbox. She is coming to your PC. In fact, let's see if... I don't know. Hey, Cortana. Say hello. See if it will or not. I don't know if it will through these headphones or not. <laughs> Can you hear that? No, no, no. It'll probably come from your headphones okay. or something. Uh, yeah, no, it's not working. Oh, but it's on my PC right now. You can actually say "Hey Cortana" and nice. it'll actually start. Uh, nice, nice. And again, kind of... something something we don't have. They like, haven't brought Siri over to the Mac yet, but it's on iPad. I forgot it was on my iPad, and and it like popped on. I'm like, oh hey. <laughs> um, one tries getting a more significant role here. Internet Explorer uh, is turning into Project Spartan. They probably need the rebranding. I mean, that seems like the first thing people replace when they sit down on a new computer um, at this point. Uh, yes. We talked about PC on your Xbox, HoloLens, giant touchscreen. Sure. Yeah, that's that's like the whiteboard or the, yeah, I guess the whiteboard on steroids from what I saw. Yeah. It's basically, it's basically a whole computer hanging on the wall. It's uh, 80 inch screen, touch screen, pens, the whole nine yards. It's saying it's called the Surface Hub, according to TheVerge.com, an 84 inch 4K screen meant for the workplace. It has camera, speakers, mics, Bluetooth, NFC, and a touch screen interface meant for a stylus. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you can have meetings with members appearing via Skype on there. Draw on the screen. I mean, it is, it's basically just a giant tablet computer, right? For the wall. Yeah. So um, Hanging on the wall, exactly. And it's using a uh, large-scale multi-touch technology uh, from Perceptive Pixel that they acquired in 2012. Um, well, there you go. Microsoft has gotten interesting. I mean, I've seen articles through the week of of when did Apple become the boring one? Um, and and not not that I completely that agree with that. That warms my heart. I'm that sorry, but it heart. does. Oh, the cool people are saying that. So I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that I'm going to not see. All of the MacBook Pros and Starbucks here in in, in the coming months, but uh, um, actually the, the funny the funny note. I don't know if you heard this. Apparently, most of the press there were on MacBook Pros at the press event. Yes, um, they were. <laughs> well, there you go. Um, but hey, you know, if I'm Microsoft and I'm looking out and I'm seeing all those glowing apples, you know, you're like, well, these are the people that I need to turn by the end of this. Amen. And, oh man, yes, wait till they right. see Hololens. <laughs> Interesting timing, though. That Although, who knows? HoloLens might work with Mac. It probably will work with Mac. Probably. Because as we talked about earlier, Microsoft is very into letting their stuff work with everybody right. else's stuff. Well, but it, the best will be on Windows. Right, exactly. And it's, I don't think it's a matter... Salesman. I also don't think it's a matter of it running on the Mac, because from the, from the sounds of it, the thing is a computer. It's not like yes. it's not you're hooking this up to a computer. It's this thing is it this is like walking around with Google Glass with Android on it. This thing is a Windows 10 computer on your noggin, okay? And I guess they said uh, it, the ones that they actually tested with that the, the press actually got to put on and, and, and experiment with. Um, they said I mean it, it didn't look as finished as the one you saw on stage. There was like kind of a wires down to like a, a, a battery pack kind of thing that you had to wear. Um, so, right. and I don't know if that's going to be how the final is, or just the version that they have right now. They say, and, and when it's going to come out, they say in the Windows 10 timetable. So their speak for, uh, I don't know, within the next year. So Windows 10 is supposed to be officially out by the end of the year, right? That's what they're saying. Okay. So and they, they, they've been a little cagey about releases in the past uh from my understanding yeah. so you know it was very interesting because I, I i don't know but i, I maybe use some of this too I, I i've been every once in a while i'll pop in and listen to windows weekly see what's going on you know i mean i am a partial mm -hmm. microsofty guy you know i mean i'm running windows 8 and xp and nothing in between 
<laughs> um, <laughs> but XP. Oh my I goodness. I feel. Oh, dude, I'm like surviving on it over just, here. Just tell me they're not connected to the internet. Well, only, only on Tuesdays. Only <laughs> on Tuesdays. Um, but hey, when you need something that's still compatible with things and just needs to run like what you're on. Um, You're right. If there was a second guest, they would be on an XP machine. Um, it's sitting right here, right next to you. But when I got this like Core Duo two, I need to get a little bit of uh, stuff out of. You know, we just throw an XP on this thing, and we're we're rolling, baby. We're rolling. If desktop presenter in Wirecast was compatible with with uh, Ubuntu, I'd have Linux on everything down here. I'm telling you. Yeah. Like it would be. I would have like five machines in front of me running Linux, and it would be grand. Um, but anyways. <laughs> I, dig I digress. Um, yep. So yeah, I can't wait to uh, check this out. Um, I, I I'm excited. I, you know, I, I feel like I'm I'm going to be able to throw Windows 10. It doesn't feel like the bloated hog it was before. Um, I think they've done a lot to kind of change that perception, and it's just um, the mass people kind of knowing it. You know, um, not that mm -hmm. we're not that we're going to not have Windows E problems. We're always going to have Windows E problems because it's Windows because it is the top one. Um, the things that I caution everybody against and tell them to get a Chromebook for, that's not going to change. But I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see it's becoming a more, hopefully, friendlier product. And, and we're seeing the promise of Windows 8 kind of coming full circle finally with this. So much so they I had agree. to skip a version. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Windows 9, who knows where that went. Yeah, into the ether, right? But I don't know. Maybe, maybe Balmer took that with him when he left. Um, speaking of forward thinking things, oh wait, first I want to touch base. Uh, another update. I, I, it was the th third week in a row we've talked about this. Remember the duet display we talked about like two shows ago, and I've been using, and I'm the weird guy in the coffee shop with two screens. <laughs> um, apparently they listened. To the, the, apparently the the fine folks at Duet Display listened to last week's show and let us know. Uh, because I mentioned about how you can only do one device at a time. Um. Only one device right now, but uh, and uh, Windows is coming soon. So I, I mean, I don't. Do you have any iPads? Are you allowed to have iPads in your household, household sir? Yes, we have an <laughs> iPad in the house. My better half is very Mac friendly. Mm -hmm. I think I've told you the story before. We walked um, for a while. I actually bought John's uh, original iPad from me. Uh, for my better half for birthday or something to so say here try this out. I think you'll like it Two my uh, a year later we bought the uh, iPhone 4 and the um, iPad 4 or 5 and then two weeks later walked in the uh, the i store the Apple store the for I a store. 9 pin to 30 <laughs> pin adapter and walked out with an iMac so yeah, she's all I. She's all I. Everything, and I here I am, Mister Windows. So love, even my own house, I fight the battle. I love that it's like the battle lines are drawn, and even in your own household, you know. Um, wow, that's 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 amazing. I don't think I could go one or the other at this point, you know. I, mean, I just it depends on the task, right? Yeah, <laughs> so, I, and I agree. That's always been my thing. Yep, I agree. And let's be honest. Apple hardware is just cool. Oh yeah, just it is. It holds up. I, I, uh, we got a Mac Mini this week at uh, my Monday gig. Um, we uh, of course we do Google Hangouts. Uh, not not so much like this. I mean we're doing straight Google Hangout uh, recordings, and it's we, we got this great camera. We got a blue ball, uh, blue blue snowball uh, uh, microphone, uh, and, and we're doing these mm -hmm. educational things with the students and everything. It's, it's great, but the, it looks so cruddy because we had this old triple core Windows Seven machine just bogging down. It was just our bottleneck, right? So we got. I finally got the clearance to buy a Mac Mini, and then I'm just like, well, there it is. And everybody's like, that's it, that's it, you know. Um, but it's incredible. Yeah. It's incredible, and it's going to get everything done and all the usability stuff they want me to do with it. Um, I'm gonna. Uh, I, I love, and I don't know. With the newer Windows, it's probably there's probably a way to do this, um, but just the fact that there's a guest mode that I can just flip on and it just deletes everything and limits access yeah. and people, and I don't have to worry about things getting weird, you know? Um, yeah. And uh, I've set up separate accounts. I do this on my computers too. I'll set up an account 
Like I have a, I, uh, I have a 2011 uh, Mac Mini up in up in the office, and I like the capture on there because I can put it up there and take the laptop and go work wherever, right? Um, so I have a login, so nothing else loads, and it's just I open up Final Cut and capture, and nothing's gonna mess with that capture uh, off of tape. I really, I know I really need to move the digital, but money, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, or or for running Wirecast, we did a live stream uh, a few months ago for Women in Biotech. And uh, down there at uh, Thrill Mill. And uh, I have a it boot up on here that has Wirecast and only Wirecast. And nothing else is going to interrupt it, right? So, yeah. I mean, like, I love that I can do the clean salt so easily on there. And I feel like in Windows, my understanding of Windows, like, somebody can do something on that uninstall that will screw it up. And it feels like it's across the board. And I don't know if that's just the way permissions are. I'm sure there's a way to fix it. I'm just not as knowledgeable. But, but the Mac just seems easier for me for those kinds of situations. So, And if the Mac seems easier, then why not use it? Exactly. You know, whether I like it or not, it, it comes down to personal preference. Exactly. My, you know, my better half loves the Mac, and so I guess what? I support But the I got to say, that Surface is real pretty, dude. I, I've been like, man, if yes, I had... It is. Well, it's it's like I, stinker, but it's pretty. <laughs> like I, I'm still like uh, to my wife. It's like she's like, well, I'm gonna get a a, a, a MacBook Air. I was like, you sure, you don't want a Surface? <laughs> yeah. It's, so, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, uh, other stuff. Hey, let me tell, or why don't you tell me about Kevlar batteries? Yeah, I saw this article on in Gadget. I I thought it was very interesting. So they found a way to add Kevlar layers to lithium-ion batteries to make them thinner but yet stronger. And um, it's hmm. really, I just, I don't know, I saw Kevlar and I thought, first thing I thought was, great, bulletproof batteries. But it actually, um, they're doing nano-sized membranes that insulate the electrodes in the battery while still allowing lithium ions to pass through to create the proper circuit. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's way more information than I actually even know what they're talking about. But I thought the idea is great. Because let's face it, in electronics today, batteries are our biggest challenge. Right. Right. So anything that will make battery thinner and make it last maybe a little longer and work a little better, I'm all for it. And the nice thing about this is they actually said the roadmap for this is fourth quarter 2016. That's actually not that far away. Right. Um, awesome. Awesome. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, battery technology, one complaint has been that battery technology is not really kept up with all the stuff we wanted to do. For size, for capacity. Yeah, amen. So if, if this is something for them to kind of jump up, it feels like it's mostly a safety thing. But still, I, but how many times have we heard about that in the last few years on recalls and such, right? Right. Well, hell, the the Boeing 747 line of aircraft were taken off flying how long? Due to batteries. Yeah. They had batteries that were catching on fire. You know, that article actually mentions that. So this would make these batteries safer and stronger. I'm all for it, you know. Exactly, exactly. Hey, Google Glass is not dead, sir. We talked about it. Great. Uncle I'm... Crappy last week was saying how he apologizes for his uh, compatriots in the in the news media. But uh, there's a company uh, named uh, Augmedics. That's a that's a spiffy name, according to Mashable. Sixteen million dollar uh, series. Uh, oh, I didn't get that part. Series A funding, I, I believe it is, uh, for their uh, Google Glass uh, software that they're working on. Um, they uh, were founded in 2012, according to Mashable. Uh, building programs for Glass that organize and present patients' records, meant to streamline doctors' work and quickly provide them with key information be better than the the uh the stand with the laptop on it that my pr general practitioner drags into every room with him um and they say uh the, you know again we're talking about like you know mainstream glass is not really working out too well they do mention the article that on top of this um glass is also proven useful in other professions 
uh, such as uh, workers on oil rigs uh, have used the product. Uh, police in Dubai are said to use them to fight crime. And NASA has been testing glass underwater to see how it will perform in space. Wow. Think anything where you just need a little computer to read out information and you need the hands free. Like, you know, something that, you know, you have on your head, maybe in your helmet or something. Uh, and your hands are kind of busy with space stuff, you know? I mean, it just it, it kind of makes sense, right, um, uh, for those kinds of things. And, and, and I'm with this. I, I, I think the professional sector, you're, you're going to just see these kind of popping up um, all, all, all over the place. Uh, uh, this Augmetics company actually is already uh, working and implemented in five medical systems. So like a UPMC, you know, or, or something like that. Right. So um, that, that that's awesome. That's all. I don't know. The, the UPMC, I, I, believe, I don't believe, is one of them. Um, but still, I mean, that that's really cool. And, and this this is not going away, this technology. And now we have things like HoloLens to, to add even more to it. Um, that That's awesome. Um, and I think this is going to change. You're going to see new versions of this. I, you'll probably see, you'll probably end up seeing how many alternatives do we see to uh, design a function at CES, uh, I'm sure you'll see somebody come up with something um, where they make a version, maybe a more robust version, uh, uh, like a Google Glass for, for more, uh, like, I can imagine having these things in a steel mill. Um, and I remember what steel mills did to our cameras that we used to send in there. Um, so having a more rugged version of a Google Glass to right. uh, maybe have a general read off of, of the temperature of the, of the cauldrons and stuff. You know, because you have to keep an eye on that. And they have these big machines, and they look like they've been there for 40 years. You know, these computers that uh, that, that read out all that stuff off, you know. Uh, if that stuff gets a little bit upgraded, and you see that, and you're not at a computer, but you see that there's a problem, you can get the heck out of there, you know. Um, you know, that, that kind of situation, I think, would be pretty tremendous. So, but, uh, so I have a question for you as a former Google Glass person. Hey, Do I'm still an explorer, mean, baby. I'm still an explorer. That's all right. I'm not done. I don't have one in my possession, but I'm not done. I'm, I'm looking for yeah, that consumer I, version. Do you think they made a mistake putting the camera in it? You know, I, I heard some speculation on another podcast where they were talking that maybe, you know, because no matter what anyone did, when you're walking around with glass on, people think you're filming them. Did you experience that? Um, one, but he was a pretty much just an asshole. Well, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I really I'm only everywhere. experienced that once. I only saw weird looks or anything like that once. Like, like the general reactions I got were kind of like, "Who is is that the thing I've heard about on TV? You know, I mean, that that's, okay. that's what I experienced. I don't know because the places I go, who knows, but, um, uh, mm -hmm. but no, generally, and I think, I think, uh, and it's probably become even more of a problem since we're, everybody's getting in the police state fear NSA mentality since it's launch. That doesn't help, right? Right? It's like great. Yeah, another, that doesn't help. Great, right. another camera pointed at me. Thanks a lot, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And also, I think it it adds a, a certainly a layer of social contract that needs to be developed. Um, it was it's a really bold thing to be walking around with a camera on your face. Certainly, um, that yeah. doesn't look like the thing that I Justine used to wear when she was part of the original Justin TV, right? Um, but it's perfect for that kind of thing, to be honest. You know, walk into a bathroom with a camera pointing at whatever. Like, that that's awkward, even though it's not really going to do <laughs> yes, anything. Yes, it right? is awkward. I always I popped it on my head, that. you know, at least. But then I'm like, what the heck is that on his head, you know? Um, yeah. I don't think it was a mistake, but they also released it in such a way so they could find out. Right? Right. The people that were willing yeah, to do right. it. The people that were willing to do it. Um, the people are willing to push those limits, you know, um, I can't, mm -hmm. you can't tell me they didn't do that and ex not expect something like the guy getting pulled from the theater in Columbus, something like bars reacting badly to it. And unfortunately, and unfortunately probably, I'm sure they, I'm sure in their wide eyed optimism didn't consider this, but anything like the person that got like mugged and it ripped off of their face and thrown on the ground, you know? Um, yeah. I mean, I think that although the camera would capture the mugger, so maybe you would think. Would well, they, I don't know. It's not even that. No, it's not even that. It's, it's not that easy to make it video <laughs> and all the time. You know, it's not right. like the functionality wasn't there. 
You know, because if I'm vid yeah. videoing all the time, I got a whole 40 minutes with this thing, right? Uh, the one that we had right. down here that I was doing a Google Hangout, and we, we brought up as an extra camera when Chachi was wearing and we're showing the leap motion. There's a convergence of I remember that technology. Episode. Like, that thing barely lasted the episode of Awesome Cast. Barely. Yeah. You know, um, I think we ended up taking off. Plus, it was so hot, you know. And that was the, that was the version 1.0 that we had. You know, that wasn't the updated right. one. I mean, even that was still like, uh, really? I got a like, I got four hours out of this one, you know? You know, much like the Pebble Watch. Like, I get a whole two days because I get tweets all day long on this thing, right? I just got another one. Actually, that's yeah. Facebook pages. Um, but anyways, uh, you know, it's uh, no, I don't think it's a mistake. Um, but I would not be surprised if they do launch a consumer version without the camera. Let it be a choice. Mm -hmm. I think ideally, let yeah. it be a choice because I think it's very functional without the camera for a notification and computer kind of situation. Unfortunately, um, when you get into augmented reality, which I think is the most interesting part of it, I think the camera may become necessary for, like, the, without the camera, you can't do word lens, which was the okay. translation app, which I loved. It was great to go up to the Mexican, uh, the, the, the Mexican uh, uh, IGA at the top of the hill and looking at the products I don't understand, you know, the cans of soup and whatever, you know. Um, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I telling was, you what's in it. That yeah. was one of the, that's the freaking future, man, you know, and, and it's going to get smaller and it's going to get cooler and you won't even know they have it on my glasses sooner or later. And, um, and people will be more worried about it, but, you know, but less people will notice, you know, so. Okay. Like I said, I was just curious. I heard it on another <laughs> podcast. And I figured, hey, I know a guy who's actually owned one. So exactly. let's ask him the question. Exactly. I, want to, I hope Shell has been, been getting into that. I want, I want to get his thoughts on it after some use, too. So um, tell me about Apple's record setting uh, accomplishment recently. Yes. While, while we all know Apple's very popular, today, you know, they've actually recorded 18 billion yes that is a b billion dollar profit with a record 74.5 million iphones sold Jeez. holy heck <laughs> that Jeez. is a lot of phones when you when you sit around not you but when people sit around and <laughs> say oh they're making a mistake not putting out a big phone they're making a mistake doing this it's all about uh making them wait you know, it's just like uh, it, it, it's 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 streaming that out there. Right. It's, uh, you know, get, in pro wrestling, you don't let the guy you want everybody to win win right away. You let it wait and you let it simmer right. and you get there a moment. And I tell you, for the people that understand this reference, the big phone, the Google or the iPhones, I don't know what we're talking about anymore. The iPhone 6 Plus was a Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan winning WrestleMania of, a moment of the iPhone for a lot of people. And the numbers show it. Yeah, the numbers definitely show it. Although I wonder, you know, and I guess this has been speculated for a long time, you know, to keep the numbers going, you know, what what's the next record they're gonna have to break? And you know the whole cycle, the whole <laughs> every year new phone just to make money and yeah. and all that well, speculation and and you know the stockholders all this. Uh, well, that's the thing. And, and, I, that and I hate thing? that because thing? if they don't meet their record they broke next year with the iPhone six plus or the iPhone seven the next year, their stock will tumble because that's the way right. stockholders work. Stock. stock Stock markets don't make sense. It's not based in logic. And no, it's not. It's, it's it just based drives in, me, show me the money. absolutely insane. And this is the thing that affects all of us and if I'm going to lose my mortgage because of crap like that. Not not because of the Apple stock, mind you. I understand that much, okay? But <laughs> but but still, like that's, the, that's what we're dealing with, that this is the... I don't know. This is a whole other non-tech rant, but, um, but, but, and instead it's like, oh yeah, so uh, you know, uh, you know, traders aren't happy with uh, the iPhone because it only sold uh, 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 17 billion this year. <gasps> Screw you, man! <laughs> they yeah, had a cool exactly. phone. That a oh, by the way, the cell phone contracts are two years. Yeah, that's the other thing too, right? Two years. That's the other thing too. And to be honest, so we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, that seems about right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I, I think this is a great number. It's you know it sold the seventy four point five million units up 
46 percent from the 51 million in the same period in 2013. Oh my goodness. Jeez, I don't. Jeez. That's a lot of phones, man. That's a <laughs> lot of. That phones. is. That is. Hey, tell me about this uh, smartphone uh, th- thermometer. Uh, we actually saw a, a not this but we, uh, i saw an instagram with i justine with a smart thermometer of some sort uh but this is there's a new one coming up on uh, kickstarter right yeah this is a kickstarter and i thought it was kind of interesting and actually from the way it looks they've actually met their goal which is kind of exciting mm-hmm. um yes it's not for windows phone while it breaks <laughs> my heart to actually say that but you know i have i had small children at one time i don't any longer um as someone who would have had small children, this would have been a great thing. Um, you know, it's, they, they're, they're tiling it as the world's smallest and easy to use smart thermometer that can actually check body temperature or object temperature even. It would, they were showing it hovering over a glass of water or over a bathtub, and, you know, being able to show you what the um, temperature of the water was. And I just thought it was a great idea, you know, no longer are the days come and gone where you have to poke your child or have to force this thing under their tongue or God only knows where else it used to have to go. I just think this is a great idea for people with small children. And it, it's basically plugs into your headphone jack and then there's a piece of software that runs on your Android or your iOS device and it gives you your child's temperature, which... How great is that? So great. And you got to think about when, you know, I love devices like this that, you know, they, they, they take the part your phone doesn't have and it does the heavy lifting, right? They, uh, these are you, as yes. part of the Kickstarter. You can get one of these for $26, right? Um, yeah. So, you know, and most of the heavy lifting is going to be done and interpreted on your phone through that CPU, right? Uh, right. Basically, all you're plugging in is a sensor. Yeah. This, I mean, uh, uh, something like this, like a thermometer like this, I'm sure is, is, is much much more if you have it just by itself you know oh um, yeah um but no it's tremendous twenty seven thousand uh two hundred thirty seven dollars as of this time here on on, on tuesday night uh 29 days to go so uh they're making it you'll get one um presumably uh so 687 backers that's pretty tremendous and there's a lot of stuff on yeah. here uh there's a lot more uh kind of diagrams of how it works and everything uh, so uh, you can check that out. Uh, click up Kickstarter and uh, look up the Wishbone, the world's smallest ther- smart thermometer by Joywing Tech over on Kickstarter. So awesome, 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 awesome. We have, trying to remember what the next segment was. Hello, notes. Um, so <laughs> upcoming events. I know this week, at the hardware store up in Allentown, we had Josh Lucas on a while ago on the show talking about crowdfunding, talking about what they're doing up there. They're starting an event. Let's start incubator. Incubator. Let's let's try it again. Let's start an incubator. Um, they're they're going to start an incubator. They're gonna they're gonna get it together and 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 see what's going on. I'm going to try to make it. I have another event happening that's kind of overlapping. It has an adult spelling bee that I'm going to uh, be partaking in. I, I can't recall if that's a public event, so I don't want to say anything uh, just yet. Um, but uh, it's uh, a pretty good week for uh, cool stuff going on. So uh, go, go to meetup.com, look up the hardware store, and uh, you'll find information for that event. Also, uh, things going on around the net. Uh, I, I, I'm realizing I had a very tech-centric week on my uh, uh, podcast at Sorgatron.com, which uh, last week was the first one that I did a full week of uh, video versions. Much like what we do here, I come down here in the morning and talk for 10 minutes, and that's the show. And we're kind of seeing how it does, how how receptive people are on are for it. Uh, so uh, if you go to Sorgatron.com, you'll find links there for uh, the YouTube channel, the Spreaker, and the iTunes and Stitcher uh, for the Good Morning podcast. Uh, last week, for instance, actually, I did a really, uh, I did a special. Uh, 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 I'm back to unboxing loot crates, and we did the rewind special that came with some cool stuff. Uh, Vol- Voltron T-shirt spoilers, if you haven't got it, um, stuff like that. Uh, this morning, very I talk- jealous. By the way, <laughs> this morning I talked about how I run a the equivalent of a Titan Tron, like you see on Raw, with a Windows XP laptop. Speaking of, you might be interested in that, Ron. Um, That's very cool. 
Uh, Microsoft, my first uh, next day uh, thoughts on the Microsoft announcement we talked about. Uh, it's a little screwed up a little bit of the audio, but again, just me kind of geeking out over this uh, HoloLens idea. And uh, also, as, as if you join us live, I had a conversation last week, and this video is over at Sorgatron Media's YouTube, um, but I had a conversation with Mad Mike about toilet tech. I extended that a little bit on my podcast as well. Um, and that one's entitled, Taking Care of Our Fannies on the Good Morning Podcast. Nice. So uh, go check that out and check out everything going on. Uh, the fine folks over at InsertCoinToBegin.com have some uh, uh, cool articles all week long, including their uh, culminating in their podcast, Boss Battle, that's recorded right after this at 8 p.m. Eastern Time at Live.SorgatronMedia.com. And uh, the Wrestling Mayhem show is going to have some great guests tonight, of course, if you're into wrestling. And, of course, the Movie Minute at ThatRamblingReview.com. Uh, you got anything coming up? Any events that you're aware of coming up, Ron? No, I lead a pretty boring life. <laughs> you know, I go home every day. I play a little Xbox. Wife comes home from work, rinse, repeat, start over the next day. So I'm here. Awesome. I'll be on Xbox Live. Awesome, awesome. Wait, what, what's your Xbox Live? You want to put your uh, name out there if anybody wants to look? Of course. Crazy Kraus. Crazy Kraus, just like the YouTube. Xbox One. That's crazy with the K. And that's all, that will be linked, of course, at awesomecast.net. Um, you can also check us out on Twitter at awesomecast, on uh, Facebook, on Google+. Uh, and, of course, you can email us, awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Please rate us. Please check out all the links at awesomecast.net. No real products to speak of today. None that are released, but you'll, we'll have a link to HoloLens whenever that's out on Amazon, right? Um, and uh, thanks again, of course, as always, to Michael Allen at Mike Allen PR. I've seen him doing the tweets, doing the notes, so I don't have to at three in the morning. Uh, at Mike Allen PR on the Twitters. Thank you for that. Thank you to our awesome audience, uh, who has been our awesome, our awesome chat room has been talking about how many things that they installed Linux and Windows on. Uh, Alex Gar says I installed Linux on my washing machine and Android on my dryer. No more missing socks. Uh, oh, Michael in the chat says I have Linux on my bending unit. So there you go. Um, they've been having fun with this episode here. So very Microsofty. We do not discriminate. Do not discriminate, right? Thank you, Ron, right. for joining all us right. at Crazy Krause on the Twitter, of course. Uh, talking to him about all things Microsoft and Xbox. So. We gotta, we gotta get you in with the video game guys here in sooner or later. But uh, I'd love to. I listen to that show every week. There you go. There you go. They're listening too. So guys, guys, connect them up. Anyways, with that, uh, thank you. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.